friends. It's always, I, always a pleasure. Always a pleasure to sit down and, and share with you information. We try to bring you the latest stuff that we learn, that we observe, and things like that, and try to keep everyone up to date on it. And I'm real proud of each and every one of you for what you're doing on yourselves. It's a difficult world, this is, I'd say, and uh, you're all doing real well. Doing real well. Not an easy world to, to, to be in. Uh, I've been asked to do some Q&As again. We are going to do specific videos. Someone was talking about neuropathies. And of course, you know, any type of neurological issue. I, the difficult thing, I think, for the average person is to realize that there is regeneration of the human body. Even though when you hurt yourself, you have an accident, you cut yourself, you regenerate. It heals. Some people don't heal well from these traumas, and you always feel a weakness or a sensitivity in those areas. The more acidic you are, it's obvious the less you can heal, because acid is what breaks down the human cells. So it's under that acid sky that the medical doctor uses these terminology caused diseases. However, in their opinion, most of these are either alkalosis or autoimmune or some ridiculous concepts of whatever. And we all know now that everything is chemistry and physics. Everything has a cause to it. And everything has an effect to it. And learning that is vital to those that want to grow spiritually because that's a ruling party here in creation is cause and effect. When you work more in the position of the now, you're not in that cause and effect world. Your bodies will always be there. You will always have bodies in creation as long as you want that and want to maintain those bodies in creation. But in time, you will, if you want, you can become the creative dreamer, the awakened dreamer, where you function in creation consciously and therefore your expression becomes far greater and you get to do all kinds of cool and neat things. So that is, it's all so cool. And some of you, I, as I talk to you guys, one-on-one, -on -one, I'm so impressed at the spirituality of all you guys. And of course, the need of this planet to have you here now, giving truth, and do this in a loving manner, because you, it, it, you've been privy to understand information that the average person has no clue. And uh, respect that. I certainly do. And give that out with love and joy because you have the key and the answers to help others. Even to those of you that are struggling, you keep going. Someone got down on me with an email that I tell people to keep going. Why wouldn't I do that? My job is to get you from Hellville to Wellville. And you're not going to get from Hellville to Wellville playing around. So I do push fruits, and someone had said to me on this email that, uh, you know, you have to tell people fruits are so powerful and fruits are going to, could wreck their life, and it's like, what are you talking about? It does hurt, fruits hurts no one. They are aggressive, there's no question. And for those that are very lymphatic up, let's call it, very acidic and dehydrated, these are the very things you want. However, one can be very toxic and have to go a little slower. And we've talked about that many, many times. Although this person in the email was nailing me for that. I'm going, what are you talking about? We've always talked about balance on, this, uh, on these videos and the importance of that. But I do push deeper and deeper and deeper because my experience is, is when you stop halfway, you're only halfway. And when you start picking up the paleos and the ridiculous diets that are out there, thinking you're, you're going back but it's going to be better, is delusional thinking you're, you're going to pop those symptoms back in time. Because this is why we push people to go even deeper. Uh, we were talking about a, a liver cancer case here, had a, a, over a 13 centimeter tumor. And it is all gone. And it only took about three or four months, I think it was. You have to ask Marcy. It was a Marcy case. But 
That's this level of work. And each of you can do the same thing. We have YouTubers right now helping people with some of the most acidic, tumored up, mass cases out there, and they're winning them. When you can win these difficult cases, you can win the other ones so much easier. Having the hard cases will mature you up because that's what we're having, guys. We have a world that's extremely sick and don't even realize that that's the irony of this problem. The average person is really deeply in trouble, health-wise. Mm. We managed to skirt along and use pharmaceuticals and stay half alive for, for a while, but in reality, the average person is dying in their 50s and 60s and 70s nowadays. Very few get up into the 80s, 90s, and 100s, so soon to see that be eliminated. Unless you guys keep going and teaching the world, and then you're going to see the opposite happen. People are going to start living way over 100 again, and it's not difficult. You know, I was talking to a lady yesterday, and her, her mom is um, 87 or something, and riddled with all kinds of problems. I mean, riddled with problems. Serious problems. And all fixable, of course. But she's 87, and she doesn't see that she can fix herself up at 87 years old. And she doesn't understand that 87, or you're 87, and you have a, a handful of life-threatening issues. You've done well. And imagine getting rid of those life-threatening issues, regenerating genetics, getting the kidneys filtering again, getting rid of all the acidosis, getting the, the fluids flowing again. The only thing that could take you out is some, someone else or, or, or get ran over by a car or something. So it's pretty cool what you can do with all of that. Now, whether we can want to think that way with the population the way it is, I don't know. There's got to be natural population control nature has it all the time because each species tends to get out of control and then you see a change and then you know that species almost disappears and then comes back i mean you see the ebb and tides of creation it's amazing it's amazing okay so there's some questions from one person let me go through this what about me squinting some of the same person get me about squinting just because they take these questions off this size and even with these readers, it's real small. And so it's just, it's hard for me to read sometimes. This is questions for Dr. Morris. So what can I expect your plan to do for COPD? Does it have any effect on growing uh, your uh, alveoli? Uh, absolutely. Uh, you have to realize the COPD chain, that's chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. Kick that disease off of there. It starts from asthma on. Asthma is that beginning chain of COPD that has one weakness that few people understand. When you're talking about pneumonia, you're talking about a lot of congestion, a lot of mucus. Well, where does all this mucus come from? Oh, wait a minute, it's in the sinuses too. Oh, wait a minute, it's in the voice box, it's in the throat. Oh, wait a minute, it's in the thyroid. Where does all this mucus come from? 90% probably dairy products. Cheeses, milk, all these type of dairy proteins are the most abrasive to the mucosa of most of the proteins out there. How irony is that? And the body has a mucosic response to these proteins, which is mucus, and that mucus fills the lungs up. For a medical doctor to think mucus is a product of bacterium is laughable. Uh, you go killing the bacteria out of your body. You know, they blame pneumonia on pneumococcus. The problem is, is that in almost half the cases, pneumococcus is not even present. You can't blame a condition on a a pathogen when the pathogen isn't there half the time and to call it a pathogen is an insult to nature in my my thinking to not understand the role of nature in the 21st century is scary especially for a modality that has the life of millions and millions of people in their hands and of course kill millions of people so very very scary 
very vital, in my opinion, that you each learn regeneration and learn how to get healthy. That's just a small part of it. You know, don't make health such a big deal. Make your spirituality a big deal. Health is easy. Now, some of you take a while to get there. No question. You got karma. You got all this stuff you're working through. Okay, work through it. And you're free. And you're free from this earth. You can play on this earth while you have a body, but you're free from it. You see what, you know what I mean by that? It doesn't have a stranglehold on you. It's hard, because right now, huh, the corruption is just every friggin' place you turn. The lack of love and spirituality. We fostered the mind, not realizing that the mind has positive and negative. As positive as you can think, as negative as you can think as well. So you're playing in the fields of duality with the mind, and it's led us to this level in the Homo sapiens. Uh, destroying the very planet we're living on, killing each other over God, uh, actually bankers, uh, the banking industry being so way out of control, narcissistic like the world bankers, to have this level here influencing so many beautiful beings and their livelihoods and their life is regurgitating to me. But it is a way and essentially set up that way and it's the way it is. So, absolutely, in what way now? Let me ask you back the question, in what way would our program affect COPD? Well, the first thing you're going to understand with COPD is it has a neurological effect with it. There's a neurological cause to this. And that neurological cause is in the autonomic nervous system. That's the worker bee nervous system. That nervous system comes back to the top, back of the head there, the cerebellum, but also down to the adrenal glands where it picks up its neurotransmitters. So these neurotransmitters the adrenal glands produce is essential to run the body. Some turn off, some turn on. It's all about the movement and restriction. There is a constant waxing and waning of everything in the body. In life, there's a constant movement of chemistry. When you have acids, which have less electrons, you have the electrolytes with more electrons. They come in and neutralize the acids. So they suck the electrons. You can see that whole event in, in, in chemistry happening when you get a good understanding that we just have two sides of chemistry and there's the play of life and the dance of life of chemistry. When you break the laws of chemistry, owie. And that's all man's done is break all the laws of chemistry. So that's all we have to do is learn how to properly eat. And we're frugivores, so I would naturally push fruit. Not going to kill anybody to eat fruit. It can be aggressive detox, and sometimes you want to back down, and sometimes if you're full of candida, you might have to back down temporarily. But this is why you get the herbs, to help you through these times, and you can kick back with some vegetables and stuff. Kick back too much, and your detox will be just that, kicking back too much. This is a, when I say detox deeper, it's just that we have miles of interstitial spaces that are dehydrated and acidic. And if you don't get with it, and we deal with the life and death here all the time, and if people don't get with it and get deep within their body in a short order, they don't live. So for, for, for some people like this one guy to make some of these statements is... is uh, Sometimes frustrating because it shows a lack of understanding what it is to be a practitioner. Being a practitioner in the healing arts, in the true healing arts, is uh, uh, a beast of another color, guys. Because you have states that are so ignorant, violating everybody's rights, the government, federal, here, violating everybody's rights, some of the countries out there violating all their citizens' rights. Uh, it's just amazing that these government officials are so big assholes. And how they get to in power, I'll never know. But the people have to stand up worldwide and claim their health rights. Because the AMA is about to take them, or the medical profession wants to take them all away. And that is including the World Health Organization. Right with the world bankers and everybody else. They want one world order and one, you know, they want to control everything, like Monsanto. Pretty soon, everything will be GMOs, nothing original again. We can't let that happen. And, and I don't think God is, to be quite truthful. That is not in the order of the coming things. 
So COPD, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, what are you going to do? Well, you're going to get into the lungs because there's always mucus acquired with this. So you're going to start cleaning the lymph system out. Now, I, I use lungs too. I like that one. Uh, we have a three lung T. This is all expectorates. Helps to loosen up mucus, harden mucus, and, and allows you to expectorate it or cough it up easier. You know, sometimes you get a dry cough, just coughing and coughing and pulling and hurting the rib cage and everything. That's why herbs are so nice because they help to hydrate and loosen. Because in a dehydrated acidic state, all this mucus hardens and locks itself around the cells. After a while, your x-ray will show a mass developing or a tumor. It's just, just all from the mucus buildup in the body. And mucus is a protection, is a lipid protection offered by the lymphatic system to the human body. Once one understands that, then you understand what's going on here. How long of a detoxification do you expect for chronic COPD? Good question. There isn't a time frame for everyone. Everybody's totally different. So there's some things you can't do with the AMA, and I'll use the word standardization. Screw standardization, there's no such thing. You know how we test herbs in nature? We bruise them, we rub them, and we smell them, we taste them, we eat them. That's how you test them. There's no machine that does those things. We've gotten plastic in our thinking. Let's get back to the human element again, where we love each other and share each other and, and, and rub noses with nature, our, our mother in, in, in that context here on this planet. So it's hard to say. I would say this, uh, I, I'd say it depends if you're on oxygen or not, um, how, how low your adrenal function is, uh, how, how much the myelin sheaths are, are weak, how many nerve rings do you have in your eyes, a lot of corresponding factors. But I would say give yourself a good year easy, good year easy, especially with chronic, uh, chronic level of this. But you're going to clean out much quicker and breathe much better and all these sort of things like this. But I'll tell you another thing about this. When you're working with these, and this has been noted about, and this is, this is something, a question this person has asked down here, and, and this was given to me by the staff because some people constantly are calling in asking questions. You say in a video that, it, that, that, that you can rejuvenate the lungs, and then on page 196 of your book, you say it is highly suggested that a healthcare professional closely monitor this process in advanced lung conditions. Wouldn't you want that to happen? Someone with experience to help monitor you? Because breathing is good, and we've been through a lot. And there's a lot of things to consider when you're at the chronic obstructive pulmonary level. Some of the older people are so weak they can't even cough. So, advise suction machines to have on hand. You can rent those at uh, medical supply houses. We recommend uh, somebody to help with the herbs and, and understand when to back them up a little bit if they're detoxing too quick. And remember, how do we do that? How do we back up a little bit? Because there's an art to this. And, and the only way I can tell you, I can tell you about the art of it, but as practitioners, you'll learn that as you work with these cases. But sometimes if it's too fast, we want to add some vegetables, or if we need to stop it completely, we add cooked food. And you can stop your detox symptoms right there. So it's, it's whether you work so hard to get to these, whether that's the appropriate thing to do or not, has to be determined in the moment. Because there's no guidelines to say, if this happens, you do this. Unless this is not medical. Medical is standardized. They treat everybody the same. They're nuts. Everybody is uniquely individual. The hormone steroids are uniquely individual. So there's, everyone must be treated that way and not treated in terms of treated with pharmaceuticals, but worked with. So in advanced lung conditions, you tend to fill up if you drink a lot of water. If you listen to what's out there, you drink your, half your body weight and out of the water and all this crap. <laughs> Try doing that with lung cancer or uh, advanced COPD you'll die right there, you'll drown yourself. You, there's a, so many things that you want to be aware of. So having a practitioner in advanced cases with some experience is, does, is not a bad idea, especially lung. So that's just my opinion. Uh, after taking all the two-week protocol products, breathing became worse and was told by Jennifer to cut into half. I slowed down considerably and was only taking it about two times daily. Uh, okay, so this is very possible. It's very possible for two reasons. 
First of all, most people are on protein diets at one level or another, which are stimulants. And most people have animal products in their diet, which have neurotransmitters in them. When you start on a detox, you're starting on the food that is known to be one of the highest in nutrition and, of course, is known to be the highest electrically. So when you're talking about fruits, and let me qualify this by saying properly grown, properly picked ripe fruits, okay? We're talking about superior foods, superior foods. These are incredible foods. So, but when you go on these, you still can crash because neurotransmitters, you've been using neurotransmitters in your meat to support yourself, and I was just talking about that on the last video or two, that when you come off of these neurotransmitters, you can crash. Your blood pressure just goes whoop, and you just, and, and when, the, when your blood pressure goes whoop, the top number, top number, is, signifies what? Your systolic blood pressure is what? Your adrenal glands. So, your adrenal glands, and you're looking at the blood pressure, top blood pressure number, we call that the cardiac punch, then you get an idea that these neurotransmitters are turning on the heart. So, when you crash from taking neurotransmitters, same thing on steroids and everything else, that's why you can't do them. When you crash, so is your nervous system. And guess what? Nervous system controls breathing. Absolutely. So you're going to feel a little more. This is why I recommend brain and nerve number two. This is why we do the 400 milligram uh, adrenal glandulars on a COPD. We can go slow on a COPD. That's okay. It's up to you on that, on that way. Uh, the other thing is, is as mucus begins to break up in the body, you know, it breaks up in the lungs and bronchi too. Uh, I ended up either in hospital or clinic where they, of course, gave a steroid shot to help you breathe and sent you home with prednisone and usually antibiotics. Well, this is what she's saying. She ended up, uh, she went with a COPD, ended up in the hospital, of course, of course. But going down that road is a walk to hellville. And it's hard to get out of that road because of just what I mentioned. But the same thing's true with steroids. Taking steroids locks the, the lymph system in the body. When you stop, like pregnizone, it explodes. It literally explodes like horses at the gate at the Kentucky Derby. Bam! I mean, it's just, it would be expected. So, I like to use the neuromuscular the antispasmodic uh, for these type of problems. So I use brain and nerve number two and antispasmodic in all these cases because I know one, the nervous system's down, the autonomic. I know two, the adrenals are down, of course, because of that. Uh, I know they're going to have mucus discharge. So all of these things we, we prepare and, and the antispasmodic will relax and allow you to breathe, where inhalers are cancer-causing because that locks all that mucus in your lungs even tighter. Well, where do you think masses are made from and all, all these tumors? Mucus, mucus, mucus. So, you don't want to stop the expectoration of the lungs, but you want to breathe, and that's a neurological event. So you're going to address breathing neurologically, but you're also going to address it lymphatically. You're going to address everything lymphatically. If you don't, you're not going to be a good healer. So you want to address everything lymphatically. And lymphatically, we add the kidneys and the skin in that, remember? And the adrenal glands, that's part of the lymphatic system. And you can use these antispasmodics to, to relax and to control tightness and spasms. Because under the acid sky, this is where you end up with spasms, seizures, uh, all these sort of things. I seem to have a lot of mucus, which I used to be able to cough up pretty easy. 
Now, no matter how hard I, I try to cough, nothing comes up, and it does it in a green mucus. Yeah, nasty stuff, huh? But if I can get a tiny bit up, it helps breathing. Well, that's the issue. So this is why the three-lung tea. You want to be careful about too much liquids because your lungs can fill up with liquids, and now you've got to take a little journey to the hospital to have aspiration done. That's why you ladies with breast cancer never have radiation. I have have a nice client. I've loved her for years, but she lies to me all the time, and I know it. Now her lungs filling up, and uh, she didn't tell us she had radiation therapy to the uh, breast. And I asked her. I said, "You had radiation, didn't you?" She said, "Yes." I said, "I don't know what to say. I beat myself up worrying over my clients, and then you go shit stuff like that. You get yourself in trouble. So of course it's burned her lungs real bad. And now she's, you know." The next thing is lung cancer if she doesn't get her act together. And this is a problem. You have to be careful your choices. Your choices in life can terminate your life or make you live in hell, Bill, for some time here. And you have to just be careful the choices you make. And this is why you guys are so important to learn the truth. This planet needs the truth. They just had a thing on Fox News. What would it be like if everybody told the truth? Well, actually, this was no. No, this wasn't. This is uh, Morgan's new Through the Wormhole. And this, this, this new segment is, can everybody, can everybody speak truth and the world still survive? <laughs> Interesting. I should watch that one. Freeman, uh, Morgan Freeman, I think it is. So you've got to get this mucus out. And these are mucus plugs, and it's just what I'm saying is that through the years, by taking inhalers, by taking uh, steroids, by continuing the same diet, no one helping you with this, you can lock this sputum in your lungs tight as a drum and you can cough and cough. Body's trying to get it out of there. But in that meantime, you can fracture your ribs, especially when you're older, all kinds of crap. This is why the herbs are beautiful, because they help to loosen the herb. The fruit helps to loosen and hydrate essential to break these plugs loose or you'll be just like she's saying coughing 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 so I designed the lung teas and, and the lung formulas to do that mullion fenugreek pleurisy root these loosen up these herbs loosen up hardened sputum and mucus so I would be using that you see okay just where on earth do I find that around here with when I have to rush to a professional, he always does the same thing as prescribed above, and I'm back to square one. Oh, I tell you, I don't know what to tell you with that. I can say that when you go into an ER, ask for a nebulizer treatment, not an inhaling treatment. You want to use that antispasmodic if you have to carry it around with you and put a quarter of a half a drop or four under your tongue when you feel tight. Who cares? Those are some of the things you might have to do to, to get out of this. But I will tell you, if you keep working this and keep working this, you'll work yourself out of that. So I would use the antispasmodics uh, frequently. If you need an inhaler, well, then use it. But don't use it when you just want to grab it because you're getting panicky and, and having an anxiety from shortness of breath. Because it has just what you're saying here. It has the kickback to it. So that's what I'm saying in some of these cases, it's a little push-pull. We've talked about this, the art of detoxification. It's some lady like this or a gentleman like this who you've got to work through. Sometimes they're going to visit the ER. You're talking about taking people, extreme cases, that the medical doctor has got them into so much friggin' trouble, and now we've got to work them out. And we're the one get bitched at instead of the medical doctors. I love that one. And that happens all the time with us. That's like, what? We're only here to help you back out. We've tried to clean up their messes all the time, and it's hard sometimes because they take you into hellville every day of the week. So you've just got to learn and work and work yourself out of this. We're not miracle workers. I mean, we're doing everything we can to help you through this. We need all of you as a team, and, and as we grow, you grow, you grow, we grow, and we become one voice. It's the only way we're going to conquer this. 
And you, in cases like this, sometimes you have to visit the ER. I spent years in the emergency room. There's no disgrace going into the emergency room. The problem is just what you said, ignorance. I don't know what to tell you. It's only that we have to work it, work it, work it, work it. Again, we try to use the herbal antispasmodics and things to control the tightness. I try to get into the adrenals and pop up the adrenal glands to pop up neurotransmitters. Uh, we're, we're into the other brain and nerve formulas to enhance the brain and, uh, and uh, of course, the autonomic. So we're in trying to enhance and clean at the same time. I mean, if you can come up with a better plan, let me know. Just can't seem to find anything to eat. It's like I'm never hungry. Well, you know why, don't you? Because nature wants to fast you. And that's just what happens, is that when we get sick, nature wants to fast you because that's how nature cures itself, is by fasting and letting the body take care of the problem instead of you continuing to eat the foods that cause the problem. So it's going to shut you down. In advanced cases, I don't like that, but it's nature. Sometimes, and this might be one I bite my tongue with, we have to kind of step in and say, okay, nature, we know you know best, but we've got extreme cases here. We need to, to have a little substance because we need to keep the energy up. We need to keep the electrical department up. We need to feed, enhance, clean, hydrate. So you have to make yourself consume something. And fruits, if you have to consume something, guess where I'm going to tell you to consume? I'm not going to tell you to consume vegetables. I'm going to tell you to consume fruit. That will hydrate you twice as fast and break up the mucus in your lung and sinuses twice as fast. If it's too fast for you, then go down to green drinks. I have no qualm with green drinks. love them. But not in detoxification. But if we use it to back one down a little bit and still keep them detoxing, sure, absolutely. Absolutely. If I'm bodybuilding, I'm going to pump them green drinks. If I'm, if I'm into uh, sports, I'm going to be pumping green drinks, superfood blends. I'm going to, you know, you, you, there's no limit to the power and health you can get in your body, especially you guys with strong genes. Holy crap. Uh, doctors are saying I have possible cancer in parathyroid. Okay. They want to give something, nuclear test. I have GERD, sleep apnea, crying at times, unexpected over trivial everyday things, and few other things listed in my file you have. And I know, honey, is why you get a little rotted out and why you, you know, you are writing us a lot and talking to us a lot. But this is why you want to go after your adrenal glands. With the steroids, they've also weakened what you already had weakened. And this is your emotions. So by weakening your adrenals, they're toying with your emotions. And of course, the same gland is where you get anxieties. So you, you, you want to get strong outside of your emotions. This is why the spiritual side of yourself is vital. And that is getting you back to your true self beyond your emotions and beyond your thoughts and mind. That's where your power is. That's where your control is. That's where your sucre is. That's where God and everything else is. And that's the only place to be, to be totally happy. And then you can be the conscious creator or dreamer in creation. But uh, I, I hear you in every way that you're saying here. I hear you. We get it. Uh, this, is a, this is a big deal. Let's look at this. I have GERD. Acid reflux. All right. Now, there's three types of acid reflux. There's the sulfur. We have sulfur all in the gut from antibiotic use. That'll turn your eyes orange. You can see that. That's, that's not a fun acid reflux. Then there's true acid reflux where you're low in bicarbonate from the pancreas and you can't neutralize hydrochloric acid and pepsin well. That's a problem because an acid will keep burning you, right? So you ulcerate. The worst kind of, of acid reflux, if you want to call it reflux, which it truly isn't, is interstitial burn outward, meaning your lymph system is backed up all the way in the stomach, all the way up the esophagus, all the way up into the brain. You can see that in the eye, and that's an acid blowback. And that's the worst kind. That is the kind that, of course, leads you into cancers and everything else. They all can, but this kind. I would say this, 
Mix yourself a teaspoon of sodium bicarbonate or baking soda, aluminum-free baking soda, a teaspoon per cup of water, and sip on it through the day. Make sure that after your meals that your mouth is alkaline. You can even chase your meals with a little bicarbonate if you wish. So important to, to kind of work with that. Now the stomach teas and stuff you can use to work with that. The sleep apnea is just what's tied to your lungs. You are congested head probably to toe. So until you clean your sinuses and you get the drain of the brain, you'll still have sleep apnea. So you want to clean everything down. Everything just packs on top of another. It's interesting. So when you're looking at the treatment uh, cancer centers of America, and you're looking at the, and we're going to have that on our website, which is oncology, the survival rate. I was going to show that to you guys. But uh, on esophageal cancer, there's no survival rate after five years. None. That means 100% of the people that use chemotherapy with esophageal cancer die. Period. End of story. And that's their statistics. Not mine. So the sleep apnea is a congestive issue. You've got to clean your body out, but your lungs, you've got mucus coming out. You know that. And mucus is highly involved in this. It's just that when it's asthma on, COPDs, the neurological side of it is there. And that's not the fun side. That's the scary side because it's the adrenal glands. That's your anxieties and emotions. And of course, when you can't breathe, your anxieties shoot the moon. I mean, this is it's, it's, it's a big deal. So lungers need me to get get this out and get their health back. It's scary stuff. I, I, I get that. Crying at times, that's all your adrenals. You have very weak adrenal glands, honey. So I would get some flower essences and work with them, but you want to pound those adrenal glands, even if you have to do two or three 400 milligram capsules uh, two or three times a day, you might want to do that. You just have to get strong in self. You can't get strong emotionally with emotions. Emotions can't correct emotions. Mind can't correct mind. Psychiatry can't correct itself. Oh, this is a good one. Can't stop smoking. Well, <laughs> need help for conquering this feat. It's a tough one, isn't it? It is a tough one. I don't have any easy answers. My, my, my way, of course, is just to go on the diet because enough people have told people to quit smoking. But you have to understand what it is. If you're going to smoke, use a water pipe. Don't pull that smoke right into your lungs because if you have COPD and you're still smoking, I don't know what to say. I can say this. You need to go out in the woods. Or you need to go somewhere. Go, go take a vacation by yourself and start to love yourself. Get happy with yourself, accept yourself, and enjoy yourself. Because you, 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 you're, you're, you're not home. And so your mind and your emotions are controlling your journey. You're not controlling your journey. And if you want to have a happy journey, you must learn to control your journey. Well, you can't control the mind from the mind, and you can't control emotions from the mind or from the, the emotional body itself. You must get beyond these sources, and I've been feeding you guys a lot of information to how you get yourself in the now. And, I, and even just as simple as playing the observer in life for a while, you're just going to be the watcher of life. No opinion. When, it, when an opinion starts to form with what you see, that's your mind subtly coming in there. And you just shut it right down. You don't want an opinion. Opinions are a dime a dozen. Belief systems are a dime a dozen. But they also restrict you from the infiniteness of life and from experiencing freedom and stuff. They're your chains. And you need a good dose, sweetheart. I take this as a female. I'm not sure. You need a, a good dose of self. Because you, 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 you're, you're jumping around too much. And that's what my staff feels about you, too. You need to get strong in the self. Know what you're doing, know why you're doing it, but get strong in the self. Know that you're going to have emotional detox with this because the adrenal glands are always involved in COPD. The nervous system is always involved in COPD, always, every single time. So that's the, the where you have to work. So you work on your adrenals, you work on that. If you cry, cry. Get it out. 
but put your arms around yourself, sweetheart. Give yourself a big hug. Every, each and every one of you are beautiful beings and you're worth hugging yourself. You know, you're all right. You're in a hell hole and you've got, you've got creation to deal with. So you learn. You learn through all your experiences and everything else. But let me say this to you as strong as I can. Stop smoking. You're going you're gonna, to you're gonna take yourself into lung cancer with this. You're burning. That's just pure acids going right into the lungs without the liver neutralization or any, any help from the liver. You're going right into the bloodstream. Burning the lungs and not only as you're doing it. Burning your lungs. And then, of course, you're changing your blood pH. Well, notice the one thing about smokers. They start getting wrinkles all over the place, right? Chronic long-term smokers are all dehydrated and wrinkled up because they're constantly pulling acids directly into the blood. If it wasn't for the blood's ability to steal what, it would kill you. So what does the blood have the ability to steal that can keep its pH factors within a certain range? 7.4 as we know. Calcium. And of course, calcium is a main component in nerve transmission, a main component in connective tissue that holds everything so it's fluffy and firm and tight. And of course, skeletal, bones, fingernails. So major component of the body is calcium. And it is used frequently in the fight of acids. But when you're smoking and bringing all that acid smoke in there, find another habit. Or find a way to smoke in a place that won't hurt you as much. But one can't bitch on one side when they're doing all this side. You see what I'm saying? People sometimes come in and are clients and they, they beat us up a little bit. And then we find out they haven't been doing their diet like we've been asking them to. Compliance. Difficult. Ah... Uh, I've tried to find residential smoking, um, all kinds of things here, medical facilities, all kinds of things. There is a, what's the herb that you can, lobelia is one of them, but if you use lobelia, it just makes the taste of the cigarettes suck real bad. Uh, they used to have a smoking formula here, I have to find one again or make one. I'm in bad shape and wish I could schedule an appointment with you, but it seems impossible and no one else seems to know what to do. I disagree with that, honey. I'm with Marcy and Meg and, and Jennifer all the time. I train them back here. I, I, I'm with them. I'm in their offices all the time. If you're having a hard time there, we'll look at that. Because I'm not going to let you go without, you know, you're going to get yourself well. Sweetie. You don't have to, you know, you want to work on yourself. You want to you get in and... and Love yourself a little bit, because you're 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 in one of the worst conditions. I, I I don't know when you ask me what's some of the worst conditions that one can have. Anything that deals with lungs and breathing is on my top list, and anything that takes you out of mobility, like MS, Lou Gehrig's, Parkinson's, spinal cord injury, stuff like that. Those are my top ones that I have deep deep compassions for, because it, yeah, I know exactly what this lady's saying. Uh, it, it it can create anxieties when you can't breathe, brother. Let me tell you something, this isn't fun at all. So COPD is not a fun uh, level to be at here. But I will, I will talk to them, and we know who you are, and we'll, I'll talk to them and we'll make sure that uh, you get taken care of. But uh, they've already talked to me about you several times. All right, now, uh, let me see who this is. Uh, this is uh, Louise. All right, Louise. Uh, these are so small, so forgive me for squinting, but they take these off so small, you can't hardly even read them. So, uh, let's see, message. Hi, long story short, my two... I like that. Long story short, my two biggest health problems right now are Lyme disease and that I have developed an allergy to almost every food. Now, we've talked about allergies quite a bit. Which system is allergies involved in? You guys are too smart for your own britches. Absolutely. It's your lymph system. Which system is, we'll use the word Lyme, okay? But can I replace it with lupus? 
Oh yeah, but can I replace it with fibromyalgia? Uh, can I re absolutely? Can I replace all those with systemic acidosis? Notice all you guys on Lyme that has Lyme that no antibiotic touches it. Not a bacterial, is it? Is it a viral? Jesse Ventura says it's a viral. Is it a viral? Or is it simply systemic acidosis? It doesn't matter what your factors in your body show in your blood work. It really doesn't. The issue is your terrain and the terrain. If it, if it wasn't a bacterial, if it was a bacterial issue, it's only a bacterial issue because of your terrain. If it is a um, viral issue that is actually taking hold of cells, it's because of your terrain. That's our point, is that nature has virals, fungus, bacterium, all these things are designed, excuse me, to break down uh, wastes and trash in the body, to help terminate cells, although you have macrophages, immune cells that terminate cells for that. But then you have bacteria that deals with wastes, virals which deal with antigens to help signal uh, the removal of cells. So you've got all kinds of help from nature. We have to understand those things, not fear those things one doesn't understand. You know, bacteria isn't here to kill you. It's here to clean you. It's just that some people's bodies are head to toe. You see these flesh-eating bacteria. It's just, you have to understand that we are in a world of extreme weaknesses genetically and extreme toxicity. And we are sewage dumps. So the world is wanting to come in and clean us up. We keep trying to kill them. But in doing that, we make us more vulnerable. It's not how it's done. Vaccines are not how it's done. I like to have a public discussion on vaccines with some medical doctors to expose the truth, and I'm sure Miss Tenpenny would. Let me see here. Uh, so, how are those two related? Lyme and um, and you're allergic to almost every food your lymph system, my friend, and it sounds like you're pretty packed up here. So the more packed up you are and you're, you're allergic to all these foods, you might have to start with green drinks, those foods that your body will accept, and start detoxifying that way first before you kick into the fruit. If not, kick into the fruit. Uh, I would say the subacid would be the best category to start, particularly at apples, because apples are a great neutralizer of chemicals. So apples, mangoes, uh, grapes, of course, those sort of things, great buffering. Uh, you could actually combine, not combine at the same meal, but you could have fruits and green drinks for a while, breaking, breaking this out. I would get into the kidneys, the lymph system, you know, our 14-week protocols, or, or at least our first detox kit. Or if you're making herbs for yourself, you know your kidneys, you want to hit the adrenals, and you want to hit the lymph system. That, that's the first thing. It makes me so stressed out to know that I cannot be 100% raw right now because most, if not all, fruits make me get an allergic reaction. So here's the, here's, and this person brings up an interesting point. Sometimes, and don't get me wrong with this, and don't take it wrong, but sometimes we have to push past things. Not, not anaphylactic shocks. You don't push past those things. But, Sometimes you're going to get rashy. You're going to get a detox going, and you can't sometimes hold that back. Sometimes your skin is going to explode, and there's not much you can do about it because going too slow cannot be a healthy thing either. Because every minute your body exists, you're creating acid waste from your cells. Urination happens frequently throughout the day, essential to remove waste. Sweating happens frequently throughout the day. Even, even the, the removal of gases out of the skin happens constantly. So there is a constant need to remove as there is to feed. So sometimes you have to bust through these doors because if you get two out there and you get to where you can't do anything, you'll lock yourself to hell, Bill and you won't get yourself out. So sometimes you've got to blow past this stuff and let your skin explode a little bit. You know, you can do it slowly, but first put yourself on salads for a couple of weeks. Then put yourself on green drinks for a couple of weeks and then start adding the fruit. You can do it that way. You can have a salad and steam 
and go to the herbs to help you. Get herbs for the kidneys, herbs for the lymph system. Clean up your GI tract. Support your adrenal glands. Very important in allergic reactions. Support your adrenals. You do that and you'll work yourself more and more into the need, the ability to use fruits and then that'll kick you even deeper and deeper you go. And that's just what you, that's how you pull yourself out of these things. Again, the art of moving someone from these states back into Wellville again. Because this is what happens with not only the type of diets, but with the genetic weaknesses within the adrenals and the kidneys and, of course, the steroid use and the oh, extreme lack of understanding by the AMA, how you bring someone from Hellville to Wellville. And you can't do it giving them more Hellville stuff. So you have to pull yourself back out of this one. But this is all tied, all tied to your lymph system and to your adrenals and kidneys. Clean up the bowels, as I said. Uh, I, so I wonder what herbs you think are the best for me right now. Or is there any paper I can fill in and send it to you to make it more easy to you to see what I need? Well, Louise, I tell you, you can get a hold of our staff, get a hold of uh, Megan or uh, Elizabeth. Uh, they will put you, either help give you some advice, uh, get your foot on the right way. We have, in, in our club here, we have three programs you can go on, from the most aggressive to the medium to very light. So they can help you with all that. You know, you can start out real slow and move yourself deeper and deeper, but start you must. And the other thing to this, uh -oh. uh, the other thing to this is sometimes you're going to have to push past something. Sometimes you just have to push past something. But that's why a good practitioner will help you with symptomology and stuff like that. Someone that's had experience with detox. Not to say that you can't detox yourselves, but just be smart when you do it. That's that's all. Okay. Let's see. This person talked about wife on YouTube. Uh, cancer markers keep raising. She is uh, so scared. All right, let's talk about this. I don't uh, know who this is. It's a person... Uh, in another country, uh, South Africa. And so, let's talk about that. Until you get your kidneys filtering, this is why this is such a big deal, guys. So once you get your kidneys filtering and you start hydrating that lymph, it's gonna just take a while to get to points unknown. It's just gonna take a while. You just, just because you get your kidneys filtering doesn't mean immediately your, your, your tumors are gone and everything else. It means you're on that road and highway finally. Because it is my expressed opinion, and we've seen this over and over for so many years, if you don't filter in the kidneys, you really can't change your symptomology. Because most symptomology is in the lymph system. So you have to start eliminating somehow, even if it's through this first. I don't care. Get eliminating. Sweat your butt off. Whatever it takes to get yourself eliminating waste out of the body. It's essential. Because these are acids and they're chewing on everybody. So you just have to uh, work yourself into these things. It says, uh, please tell me where to start. Healing tea appears to be good. Unfortunately, I seem to have parasites that I cannot get rid of. Would also like to know if you ship to Canada. Boy, oh yeah, we ship to Canada. I'm hoping in the future that uh, we can create this one big association where we, are, we have our attorneys, we have everybody to help you. And we can also get into other countries and go after them for, for things because it's just unfair some of these customs and some of these things and some of these countries are just not fair to its people. I'll say if you want to get started, it depends how toxic you are. It's like this lady we're talking about here was so toxic it's hard for her to start. You could use the heal all tea and start that way, absolutely. And do it all, do all raw or do at least 80% raw, 20% cooked. So that would be 80% uh, uh, vegetables, maybe some green drinks, maybe some light fruits if you can tolerate them, and then 
maybe 20% steamed. That's for the cases that you got to be careful about the blowback. But at some time or another, you're going to have to let it go at some time or another. The nice thing about this is that herbs don't seem to affect you dietary wise in any way. You can, it seems like you can always do the herbs. I don't know what, so blessed. Just so incredible. So you can always use herbs to manipulate yourself in toward Wellville to where you can kick up, kick up the road a little bit and get into more fruits and stuff like this. And by the way, fruit isn't really fasting. If you go on a, what I call a 40-day grape fast, I only call it because some people think if you're eating just grapes, it's a fast. It's not. You're eating a mono diet of grapes for 40 days. That's not fasting. Fasting is water or nothing. <clears throat> so we call it fasting because you're kind of just isolating it to one food and stuff. So, But real fasting is, is water experience. And if you eat one food for 60 days, so what? It happens to be the most nutritious food and the most energetic food. You're not starving. You're not getting no energy. You're, you're, you're in the perfect place to be. The problem is, how toxic are you? So, where you start, my opinion, that's why I put these kits together, did it for my own clients, Start on the first detox kit. If you can afford that, start on that first two-week kit. That's a dewormer. Uh, it's, it's all of that. If you're having a hard time killing parasites, then you want to take Wormwood Formula, which is our Parasite G, and do probably four or five capsules of that four or five times a day. I was trying to remember the name of that little old lady that had, uh, she was a little healer woman. She had a, a parasite program, but she had 20 capsules. You worked up to 20 capsules of wormwood. That's a lot of wormwood. Dangerous. I was trying to remember her name. I can't always remember so many people out there. But I would do that kit. And if you saw parasites in the stool, then you want to get a little more aggressive with parasite M and G. Once you see no more parasites, wait a month and go it again to get the eggs. And then you might want to wait another two or three months and go again. If you're that wormed up, some people are extremely parasitic up. I mean extremely so. I mean, I was just showing someone on the uh, YouTube here some worms here. I mean, you see this. This is a flask of uh, thread worms. A nurse got this out of her that felt her brain going numb all the time and she could feel wiggling up in her head. This was brought to me. This was a 13-inch roundworm who I, was alive, but I didn't know how to feed it. Now dehydrated. I don't know if you can see that through the bottom of that jar, that little baby. I don't have any decent tapeworm. Somebody send me a decent tapeworm. Now, if you can see this one. This one's a little furry creature like a wasp with legs on it. I don't know. We need Drew for you to kind of see that one. Wild. Parasitology could be a fun course. But I do wear myself all of that flukes, all of that sort of thing, and get going that way. You know. But what is our whole focus here? The lymphatic system. Why? Because it sits at the main cause of all these symptoms that we're having. It sits at the cause of man's death. It sits at the cause of strokes, heart attacks. Or oh, wait a minute, the blood sit it's how it impacts the blood system. The cholesterol placking isn't in the blood system. It's in the wall of the vascular system, in the lymph system. Calcifications, same thing. Wherever you see acids, you're going to have to see some way your body either neutralizes or in some way expectorates or expels these acids, or in time it'll try to protect them with a protective coating we call a tumor. 
Health is fun. Why don't you enjoy that? You know, there's so many people out there that are so rigid intellectually. Let go of the mind, guys. It's too rigid. Health is simple. It's easy. Have fun. Fruits are good. Enjoy all this. People may get too serious about things. Loosen up. Because it, it, you want to have fun with us. Now, let's see. Uh, uh, Monique. Hello, oh, Monique. Due to bad allergy issues, boy, we're into the lymph system today here. Due to bad allergy issues with a lot, I'm very limited to what I can use. Even the most natural of stuff have been detoxifying and living as much living foods for months now. What can I use do best to address that first, to be able to use other herbs to start working on everything else? If I have a progressive muscle disease with a high degree of invalidity, she's an invalid, with all kinds of related and unrelated health issues. Oh, hell yeah, Monique. She's from the Netherlands. Well, sweetheart, what side of chemistry would you have muscle wasting on? And it's the same side that wastes all the cells. That's your acids. Now, where do these acids, someone asked me, where do these acids come from? This comes from every cell in your body. Every cell poops. Realize every cell in your body is like a little baby. They eliminate waste and they ask for food. Same thing. So how does your body deal with these two things? And we've done video after video on this subject matter. Uh, the need to get rid of waste. And this is the big buildup of allergies. Of course, all the dairy, all the mucus, all this stuff. You want to get allergic to things? Keep acidifying and toxifying your body up. Keep using the makeups and all this stuff and getting these chemicals inside of you. And pretty soon you're going to reach a, the cup is full. Can't handle it anymore. And you're going to, it's like penicillin or it's like sulfur. Anybody can take sulfur until it starts accumulating in your body enough and then you get allergic to sulfur drugs. It just shows you have too much in you or some chemical thereof. So how do you remedy when you have too much of something in your body? Detoxification. The golden key. Always the golden key. So the same thing. This is the lymph system. I'll tell you this. It's important to have steroids. And you know why. They give you steroids in these conditions, right? So what's the first suggestion? Hey, doc, you're going to give me a steroid, right? You're going to give me a form of cortisol, whether it's progesterone, uh, pregnisone or whatever. You're going to give me a cortical steroid, right? Well, now, let me ask you, isn't my adrenal glands produce cortical steroids? And why isn't my adrenal glands handling this problem of mine? Good question. Could it be my adrenal glands are down and that my acidosis is way up? Absolutely. Absolutely. So, you've got to always address your adrenal glands in every single case. Every single case, you address your kidneys and adrenal glands in every single case. Matter of fact, look at our first kit. We've got Parasite G, Parasite M. That's to deworm you. We want to always deworm our clients. And I suggest you each, when you're helping your friends, helping yourself, or you're in a clinical situation, deworm your clients first that thing out. Right? The first two weeks, deworm them. One kidney, well, we actually use two kidney formulas now in our first kit because there, you know why now. Uh, we have an endocrine gland formula, adrenals, thyroids, pituitaries. We have a stomach and bowel formula to start working on the gut tissues. We have a liver and gallbladder formula, and the reason is the liver is so vital of an organ, it's a major chemical manufacturing plant, and it's a major chemical transmutation factory. So we want healthy livers, and it just happens that the Barber's family, the burdocks, the yellow docks, the organ grapes are great for the pancreas as well. So we're working with digestive organs as well, and chemical factories and everything else. So the liver, gallbladder, and pancreas, we're picking up with that liver, gallbladder for me. So see what I'm doing? 
I'm into your, uh, into your kidneys, the controller of the lymph system. I'm into your adrenal glands, the controller of the kidneys, and every other friggin' thing it looks like in the world. Uh, I'm into your getting worms and flukes and fungus and all this out of your body. We're into cleaning up the worst part of man is their GI tracts. We're into that. That's essential. That, 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 that's major. Uh, and, you, and we're into the glands, which can literally control everything. You see where we, why we're doing this step? You want to think, no matter what your individual problem is, you want to think, I'm going to clean my body out as a whole. Don't associate diseases with a treatment program for that. The only difference is when you're dealing in a lung case, you're going to use lung formulas. If you're dealing in a prostate case, you're going to add some prostate formulas. You see what I'm saying? But your main focus is always going to be the same because it's that system that's down in everybody. You, you would be hard-pressed to find someone that didn't have lymphatic problems to some degree or other. You'd be hard-pressed to find someone without kidney and adrenal weaknesses. And you'll never find anybody on the planet without GI tract problems because it's just... Even the medical doctors don't see them in, in, in all these uh, dissections. Remember I told you about a surgeon friend of mine who saw a healthy colon back in the early 70s at a four-year-old dissection at Harvard. He said that's the only one I've ever seen, and that dates back to the early 70s. Imagine today with all the uh, uh, more meats and the, and the soda pops and all the acid foods and drinks people are eating. It's a mess down below. So you see where I'm going? Allergies or not. Again, there's going to be a certain point with you guys that have extreme allergies where your lymph systems are a mess where you're going to have to push through this. And I'm not talking about anaphylactic shocks. If you're worried about that, carry your, your stuff right there. You know, carry your Benadryls and all this. But you've got to make it through this doorway at some time. So go slow at first. That's okay with me. Go half your dosages on your herbs. Start out with some salads or green drinks and some things, but detox you must. If you play around too much in the lower levels, you'll be frustrated because you're not going to get to the point you were wanting to get, and that's out of trouble. So sometimes you have to push through some things. It's just the nature of the beast. Not everything is perfect down that road to well, Bill. There's ups and downs and all kinds of things. I don't know what else you can say about that. Well, here's some eyes here. But this is a long, I'm sorry honey, but this is such a long thing to read here on the YouTube. Uh, it's really long. Uh, this is a female. I can't pronounce the name. Am I going to try F A R N A S? Should I try? No. I am actually from Iran and I am living in Austria about 15 years now and I am 29 years old. Yeah, honey. <clears throat> Austria. I've got a client, an old client in Austria, who bought an old lumber mill and turned it into a health retreat. <laughs> uh, I wonder how he's doing after all these years. Thank you for your helpful videos and answering my questions. Since two weeks, I ate just watermelons, grapes, and sometimes salads for dinner. Now I will spend all my money for this food because I know now that my body is very acidic and I have to do something. Uh, and after eating just grapes and watermelons, T-A-D-A, -A, uh, the itching which I had is, is going better. But my face skin looks like a war zone. You remember, you got to push through this stuff. you got to get this lymph moving. You can't just take a few herbs and eat a few things and it's suddenly gone. Some people have that luck. But when you're backed up subcutaneously, that's under this top layer, uh, it takes a while to get that out of there. And if you're scarred up and everything from these acids, it takes a while for that scar tissue to go away. Somebody said that I made a comment somewhere in a video that Someone that had laser surgery to her face and said that uh, I made a comment that's nothing you can do. I, I never said that. If I did, I must have been one late night because uh, your body eats up scar tissue. 
uh, I have a lot of acne, uh, little pimple with white heads. And again, those little white heads you pop, that's all lymph. That's all sewage from the cells. You got to realize that you have a, a, a hundred trillion, write that out and you see what it looks like, a hundred trillion. That's a lot of cells. And each one of them eliminate waste. Each one of them pee or poop or however you want to look at it. That's a lot of waste. Your body has to think about how do I get rid of this, these acids, because the blowback is what medical doctors call diseases and what we call conditions or issues or disease or whatever. I took the kidney and bladder three capsules and ate a lot of water rich fruits and a lot of dark grapes. I also know now that my kidneys are not filtering. I did the test at home and that's important. Good girl, boy, smart girl here. I love that. In my last email down below, I sent to my eye pictures. So can you please see them and tell me what is going on in my body? Well, you know immediately though on the skin, this is all lymph. Uh, I take all the herbs which you told me in the last video, adrenal capsules, kidney bladder, da 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 da, lymphatics, da 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 Should I take these herbs all together? Absolutely should. You take all these herbs together, they all go in. For how long should I take this herb? You want to clean up. You want to be done. You want to be where you want to be in your health issues. You want to be sitting in Wellville laughing and joking with all of us having fun. So you want to get your body to Wellville, whatever, however long it takes and whatever it takes. My opinions, you know, as a practitioner, that's what I think as on myself. You told me in you last video that I have to sweat, so should I do rebounding? Uh, not when you're not filtering. Remember, rebounding, any, any pressure on the joints and no filtration means more acid, means joint problems. My whole life I have excessive sweating. Perfect. When you have, and this brings up another question, when you have excessive sweating, what does that tell you? That tells you your kidneys aren't filtering. But the fact, the fact that you can excessively sweat, I'm happy with that. I'll take that. I'll take that. Now let's get your kidneys going. And now you'll be eliminating uh, waste at a high level. This is perfect. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Uh, I can go on and on and on here, but this is just so loaded. Let me, uh, and I don't have any time left, let me look at her eyes here. I'll show them to you here. Let's see, right eye. Okay, I'll buy that. All right, right eye. All right. Uh, Stomach and bowels hit me right off here, dear one. Uh, stomach and bowels are uh, a major issue here, particularly down in the cecum area down in here where the appendix is tied to that. That area and near the ileocecal valve where the small bowel comes into the colon, uh, all of that area is not real happy. So working on the GI tract, essential, because you're not real happy even in the small bowel. Really a dark eyes, hard to see, but it looks to me like you've got some radius solaris, one going through the pituitary, and maybe one trying to go through the pineal gland. The pineal gland one will give you, yield you uh, insomnia, and the pituitary can yield you all kinds of problems, from menses problems to uh, excessive bleeding, uh, irregularity, to stunning your growth, to making you grow too much. Uh, these eyes could be better, you just have a lot of... Uh, reflection, sweetheart, I can't see, but it's enough to say that I'm looking at a right leg weakness, I'm looking at a, a some uh, chronic, if not a little, deterioration in the kidneys. Uh, the groin, which includes the appendix on the right side, is all weak, and the right hip. So you want to, again, get these kidneys filtering and help with the, the hip and the, and the groin and that. Also, I'm looking at a pancreas. You might want to spend a little time working on a pancreas, you have a little chronicness to the pancreas, and clean your liver gallbladder out. It's hard for me to see at the breast line and everything else because everything else is too dark. Left eye. Uh, this looks to be a left knee here going on here, so be real careful especially with rebounding and things like that, because during detox, I believe you're going to fill this knee back to a groin, and I'm either looking at a, a left hip or left ovarian weakness. 
coming back to the kidney, you got bilateral kidney weakness big time, honey. You got to work on your kidneys big time. Work on your kidneys. Also, rectal, uh, up in near the rectal flexor, uh, there's a weakness there. And I believe at the head of the bladder, you got a weakness there. Uh, it's real hard for me to see anything else, sweetheart. You got some nerve rings, so you know your adrenals are chronic. Your left adrenal is not overly chronic, but it's still there. Your uh, right adrenal gland is looks better, but again, the kidney underneath isn't. So good eyes, you know. You got some nerve rings all over the place. <laughs> now you got some nerve rings you got to deal with, and you got to get the kidneys and adrenals up, and get your GI tract, stomach, and bowels uh, in need of some uh, regeneration. But all in all, you got a good body to fix up. You just got to get your lymph filtering. But I can see why, looking at your eyes here, that your kidneys are involved. You you have to work on your kidneys. This is this are big deals right here, because they are very much involved, much more than the adrenal glands. Uh, also, the hip, uh, groins, those things are at issue. Pick up that pancreas too a little bit. All right, so I'm going to come back and. Uh, This is going to be a shorter video, so that ought to make you happy. I, it's so hard, you know, kind of correlating all these things, because I'm doing the 14-week protocols for you, I'm doing the iris analysis for you, and I don't let anybody else do those. And so uh, I'm not like Dr. Jensen, he let others help him, I don't. So it takes me a while to get them all. But uh, other than that, if you're suffering, guys, please call in. We have a staff that will help you get your feet planted on the right focus here. Love to talk to you over the videos. But if you're hurting, I don't want anybody out there to get themselves in trouble by waiting. Waiting too long. Uh, I'll scoot a little more timing. I'm bad about that. But listen to this. Help me. I'm a 16-year-old boy who is suffering from severe atopic uh, eczema all my life. I am effective in large areas of my body, such as my face, uh, abdominals, uh, legs, arms, neck, back, scalp. Uh, poor lad. I am allergic slash sensitive. Look at what the, guess what our title today is. Isn't that interesting how that is? I'm allergic, sensitive to foods such as dairy, eggs, nuts, and seafood. They're all crap anyway, my friend. You're not supposed to have them anyway. That's junk food. I hate to even call those foods. They're not really foods for humans. So, no wonder your body doesn't want them. I feel like my problem has affected my growth potential. I am five foot six and am underweight for my age. Another problem is that I suffer from an excess amount of white goo in my eye. Any advice would be much appreciated. Yeah, this is Robin. Okay, well, let me say this, that white goo, that's mucus. And it sounds to me like your cup is full, my friend. And especially with all that you're saying here, your lymph system at 16 years old, I have to tell you guys, this lad has kidney and adrenals for sure. And how could you go wrong if you fixed them anyway? You can't. So it's just you gotta get yourself filtering here. My friend, this is uh, very important. Your, your, your limb system is backed up head to toe. This is serious stuff for a 16-year-old because we're talking about acids. And so think of a baby, an infant baby, that had a diaper full of urine on all day long, and you change that diaper after all day long full of urine. What are you going to see, moms? What are you going to see on the bottom of your babies? You're going to see a burn bad. Why? These are the acids that come out of the cells, and your urine is supposed to be the channel for them outside. That's why you don't hold urine or stool next to tissue. Especially, you think about your stool working its way through here. And a sensitive mucosa, you can see all the burn that's going on from the hydrochloric acids that are not being neutralized to all the acids that are broken down from the undigested foods or the digested particles are still going to convert to acids. As fermentation, putrefaction take place, acids are formed. This is a natural rhythm and process of nature. 
but we're supposed to eliminate them outside. Thank God the earth and everything else can deal with these. So, son, you, you just got a lot of built up of this in you. If you can, get your diet raw. And if you can afford to get your parents on this, you can let your parents watch this, you've got to address your kidney and adrenal glands because where you're going isn't good. I've had a lot of young uh, youngsters like you that uh, grow tumors in them all the time from this problem. So you have to be very careful because what you see on the skin is also what you see inside. That's the scary part. The scary part is what you see is what you have and what you get. That's why it's I do these. It's for you guys, especially you young guys and gals. You're just starting out in life and you're starting out in hell, Bill, already. And this is exactly why I preach that, please, all of you guys that want to be healers, help me. I'll give you career opportunities. You can grow. You can start your own business. We'll help you in every way because there's too many young lads and, and gals suffering like this and it's ridiculous and these guys are going to have serious 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 health problems early on in life you can't look at, at life that everyone's the same like medical thinking everything's standardized that's a bunch of crap and the and the fda has to chew on that because you can't standardize everything that's ridiculous and it's ridiculous to think that anyway that's socialism anyway so the goo, though, coming out your eyes, son, is mucus, and it's just you're full of it. If you're not careful, you'll pop styes on your eyes. I did growing up. I had the same thing. I, I didn't know what it was. Keep drinking the milk. Keep having the migraines. Keep having all the mucus and the rashes. Keep having the rosacea. It's okay. It's not okay. And it's no fun for a young person to go through their youth with health problems when they should be out there having some fun. So you got to address this land. I don't know whether you, you know, obviously 16, you probably live at home. Again, let your parents review this. You need to get on raw food and learn about detoxification. If you can afford to get into some herbs, you can do the Fab Four or Five. That would be a good place for you to start. You're 16, although at 16, I have them on all the kits full bore. But if you want to start out slow, the Fab uh, Four or Five, you want to do a kidney formula, you definitely want to do, or two, with your case probably two, you want to do an adrenal glandular, but in your case your adrenals are genetic, so you want to wake those up, so I would do adrenal glandular. I would do at least one lymphatic formula, say lymphatic one, I'd probably do the capsule so that way I'm getting a bowel cleaner at the same time. I definitely want to think about a stomach and bowel formula, especially if you're a little backed up that way, uh, and, uh, and uh, maybe an endocrine gland or a parasite M deworm yourself, even at 16. You know, really go after these, uh, go after your body, my friend, and you'll get rid of all of this. And you're young, and you'll come on top of this, and you'll have a great life. But you're 16, and one day you're going to want to have a woman, have some children, and you don't want to keep passing your family's genetics down the line because you're, we're getting into very serious times. And when you understand that we have a slaughter going on here with chemotherapy and the kids, a slaughter, your parents want to think real strong about what system you have down. You have your lymph system down, and these are all lymphomas that kids are being slaughtered. And if you don't believe me, the statistics are there, guys. You know these St. Jude's, pretty little St. Jude's? They're oncology. So out of 100 kids, of 100 parents, kids that go into that hospital, only three live after five years. 97% die. They tell you and they lie to the courts, but that's not what statistics are showing. And when you get them in court, they don't want to show statistics in court or to a judge. You don't want to show the truth of what the AMA is doing to a jury and have them see the facts. This is serious stuff going on out there. Serious stuff. One more. One more. Hello, I'm a 19-year-old female. I get hiccups every day after meals and just randomly during the day. When you do that, watch that you don't breathe when you eat, that you don't breathe air in when you're eating and when you're swallowing. Some people breathe in when they're swallowing and eating and you're bringing air in. 
Outside of that, you could be fermenting your foods. You want to check your eyes and see if you have a pancreatic weakness to make sure you're not getting fermentation and things real quick. Definitely watch your food combinations. Proteins and starches do not mix at all at the same meal. You do not mix a protein and a starch. You don't have bread in a sandwich. You don't have uh, uh, mashed potatoes in a steak. They don't mix. And of course, if your pancreas are down, you're going to get, oh, she sent me an eye. Now this is, is this a left eye, my dear one? Yes, it is. I also have enclosed a lacuna at the top of my left eye. I'd like to see your right eye because the right one is going to be where the pancreas is. But there's another thing. Notice how you've got yellow throughout your eye. Now, I could say this is a subacute stage, and it's probably what I'm going to do. You're entering a subacute stage of lymph toxicity, and that turns the eye yellow. If their brown comes in there, it'll turn your eye green or hazel. So what I see in the left eye, I see some good genes. You've got some good genes here, dear one. Good, good genes for 19 years old. You've got a little thing going on in the stomach. Be very, very careful. But you have major malabsorption. You want to see this? There is a ring about a half inch outside of the pupil. And you can see it because it's a yellow, almost rope around. That is her bow wall. And because you can see that yellow around that bow wall, that's lymph stagnation for your iridologist. That's lymph stagnation in the autonomic nerve wreath, which I disagree with that. I disagree that that's the autonomic nerve wreath. I disagree with that one, but that's just my disagreement with Doc. That is your bow wall. Your autonomic system is your nerve rings. That's not just from anxiety and stuff. <laughs> that's from the breakdown of the myelin sheaths. But if you look at this eye, you will see right around this pupil, this rope, this thick rope. When you go to the pupil, you will see a thick brown ring. So you are more than moderately malabsorbed. You're not absorbing your nutrition here very much at all, sweetheart. With that said, your skin's down a little bit. You got a little genetic weakness in the skin, and your left kidney needs to be refurbished a little bit because big some genetics in that. Uh, the adrenals, probably they are, everything's around subacute. Not bad. The whole left leg is a little weak genetically, a little bit in the groin, but you have some, your weaknesses are low. This chest wall is a little weak, so be careful here. Uh, you got to build up a congestion in your bronchial trunk, feeding the upper and lower lobe, so you got some mucus, excuse me, building up in the upper and lower lobe here. Uh, this lacuna you're talking about, this is up in the brain area. Uh, it does encroach. There is some pituitary weakness going on here. So I think you hit that right. You see that right there, a little before 12 o'clock there. It also creates a little bowel prolapsis there. But uh, I like, uh, this is a nice eye. My God, you've got great genes. You just get in and get your lymph moving. Be careful what you eat. Stay away from proteins, I'll tell you that, because your stomach has got a couple places that are burnt that are not real happy. So be very, very careful with your stomach for a while. I don't know what your right eye is, but that's enough to, to look at that. Uh, okay. Now, uh, this could be sulfur, a light bit of sulfur, but I don't think so. I think it's subacute weakness here. Now... Uh, once in a while they sound like squeaks. I've had this for a few years. Okay. I went to my doctor at least a year ago and he said that I get hiccups because of playing wind instruments. Well, I mean, you could be breathing and swallowing air. You could be. I say most of the time that happens when you eat. And maybe because you do play the clarinet or whatever, saxophone or whatever, that, that's bringing in air. I don't know what to say about that one. Uh, but also you want to look to also fermentation and stuff like that in your in your in your GI tract too And like I said, there's something going on with that stomach So you could be very low in hydrochloric acid and you wouldn't want to supplement it, but you could be low in that and Still be getting a burn there uh, Let me see here. I still don't know why I have these hiccups and they're really starting to annoy me I would annoy me detoxify yourself, watch when you eat that you don't breathe while you're eating, swallowing in other words. 
They don't bother me when I'm trying to sleep or anything. I also have a closed lacuna at the top. I saw that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, uh, again, you have to consider fermentation and stuff like that in the gut as well. So clean all of that up, and I'll bet all those go away on you. I love you guys. It's a pleasure talking with you. And you're not going to always know how to fix every single thing that's out there. And it's unimportant because if your focus is health, that's all you need to have. If you get into diseases and, oh, poor me and this and that, uh, and into their idiocy of I can't cure anything, which is because they name these diseases, they don't understand what causes them, so of course you can't cure them. So when you understand health, of course you can because you're going toward well bill, and that makes the body healthy. And when that's happening, proper hydration, proper base balance in the body, everything is, all the fluids are hydrated, you remove the obstructions to the flow of energy, so blood, nerve, and lymph is moving well, and everything is better, and you're, you're, you're well into well bill. So have fun on these things. Everything isn't always perfect down here, but you are. And it's good to meet each and every one of you guys. And, you know, for those that have the quirky little attitudes, keep them in the back burner. We're all working together as one. So I love you guys, and it's a big, big, big pleasure for me to spend time with you and to work with you. I just love to see you get your wellness back. It's so exciting. We should all be happy for each other to get well. We should turn everything to the positive side because we're all one. I love each and every one of you. So here's a big hug for each and every one of you.